All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Jack Klein Owner Series here on MLB The Show 24. So we didn't really do much in the last um, series. After a while, we started messing with it. And um, as the season progressed, I started losing a little interest because I wasn't sure of how I wanted to build the story out. But knowing uh, where we're at now, and knowing that we're at the start of the season, my goal is to uh, begin uh, and continue this series here on this new game. Now, we're going to talk through a couple different things today about the, the team itself on all rosters, uh, even including the single leg group. And uh, we'll also talk about how we'd like to kind of move forward in some of these things. Um, so we'll walk through it. And my goal is to just kind of take my time with it, you know, try to get through the series as, as much as possible, as often as possible. But some of these episodes may last a little longer, maybe an hour and a half or so. Some may last only about an hour, but I think uh, that's how I'd like to do it with baseball. Uh, the goal is not to stick too long into one particular season um, because uh, I want to really dive into the drafting aspects off season. I think I have a lot more fun with that here in MLB than I do in Madden when it comes to off season stuff. So we're definitely going to kind of uh, mix it up and, and kind of go from there. When it comes to the sliders, we're going to keep everything default, but the only thing is I'm going to reduce the amount of trade frequency. I think I've seen this happen before in MLB The Show, and it was recommended to kind of tune it down just a little bit. When it comes to the gameplay sliders, or the gameplay like difficulty and settings, we're going to be using Hall of Fame like we did last season. I'm not that great at this game, so I think this is kind of perfect there, but we will turn off all the tips and stuff um, and kind of see how that works out. We're also going to uh, have base running be analog select. So I just have to press like a, a certain base in order to do it. Uh, we're going to be using the buttons to go contact swing, normal swing, or power swing. And then we're using timing to uh, rely on the overall uh, rating of that player. So that's what I'd like to do in that space. And then we're turning off all the PCI stuff. <clears throat> like I said, I'm not that great at the game, but I... I like the simulation component of what MLB The Show does, so it's going to be fun in my opinion. Defensively, we're going to go classic uh, pitching interface with uh, the Chevrons. If there is something that you recommend maybe to change there, let me know. Um, but that's how we'll kind of set it up. And then we're just going basing it off the pitching classic just to ensure like um, we're just leaning on the uh, attributes of the of the player. Cameras, I'm still messing with the camera stuff. And then everything is manual. So I really want to get, like I said, get involved with all the stuff. How do I deal with the waivers, injury management, things like that? I really want to tune into that space. As far as this team is concerned, there is a lot. And I mean a lot of stuff we have to work on. Uh... But I definitely want to just kind of show what we changed here. As far as the scouts are concerned, I went ahead and updated the scouts based on a remaining uh, the budget that we have, which is about eight and a half million dollars. So knowing that, I went ahead and updated my scouts. So currently, right now, I have Clinton Saldana, whose main focus is on position players. Uh, Efficiency is pretty decent. Discovery is actually pretty strong as well. I have uh, Wari Waller, who is very efficient with pitchers, uh, discovery, and light on the position players. And then I got Stan Green, who I selected based on the remaining uh, budget we had, high efficiency, and uh, pretty good with pitchers and stuff. So I am definitely trying to focus on pitchers because of uh, one of the best players in baseball is no longer on the Angels. Unfortunately for us right now, when I look at the coaching staff, it is horrendous. So Ron Washington's pretty good with contact and play vision, which I'm cool with. But the issue that I'm encountering right now is the hitting coach is horrendous. His focus is on bunting. You also got the pitching coach that doesn't have anything good. And then you have the uh, 
hitting coach, the first base coach, is a bad durability and stealing is okay, but you lose arm strength. I don't like that. You have a third base coach that's actually cleaner, but his fielding makes it off. So that again is really rough. And then you got the farm staff that is on a four-year contract with $925,000 salary. Arm strength's okay. Blocking isn't an issue. Plus one contact, plus one. So basically before we move forward in a lot of this stuff, we have to take into account the staff uh, improvement, right? Ron, uh, Ron Washington's pretty good. But we have to think about what are we going to do moving forward in the, in the next ones. And when you cut a freaking coach, you, lo you lose out on every a bit of money that you actually gave them. So $950,000, basically a million here. You got 1.5 here, 3.2 here, and freaking over 3.6 million for him. And then you got freaking almost <laughs> insane, almost 9 million. So... The salary issue right now that we got going on with the staff, we just got to be better with it. So that's why I'm really looking forward to moving forward, uh, like moving quickly in the first couple seasons, because there's a lot of players that, in my opinion, are are, are uh, going to lose out in their development. And we got to think about how we're going to reload this team and hopefully uh, succeed. So when you look at the roster, this team has quite a bit of stuff that uh, we gotta work on. Starting pitchers right now, you got Patrick Sandoval, Reed Detmers, Chase Silseth, Griffin Canning, Zach Plesak, Tyler Anderson. Um, those are the you know some of the main guys here at the top that their OVRs aren't so great. And you got some other guys here like Bryce Osman, Chase Chaney, Davis Daniel, Atlin Rangel, Kenny Rosenberg, uh, Daryl Hicks. Like this stuff isn't that strong. And we're going to have to think about maybe how we're going to be able to develop some of these guys, right? You got a Barrett uh, Kent here with a B potential. So when I see something like that, although he's got a 58, I'm like, man, we can keep him in double A for probably two more years or three years and then and then move him up to triple A. And then hopefully by the time he is 25 or so, he should be ready for the major. So we're gonna it's going to be a heavy investment on Barrett Kent. But I'm going to pay attention to that. And that might be something we'll probably look at in, um, you know, in the future episodes there. As far as relief pitchers are concerned, um, again, like I've seen some of these players that I had and it is not great. Uh, some of these guys are a little older and um, aren't so great. Like Jimmy Herget to me is, is a rough player. Andrew Wants, I remember him last uh mlb and he was okay but it looks like he's gotten a little bit better 28 though i think we could still work with that uh 73 overall uh, jose soriano like i was a big fan when he was when uh in the last uh mlb and uh i haven't really seen much out of him so my hope is that we can kind of rock him maybe maybe another year or two down in triple a but there's a chance that he might move up into the active roster uh, for the MLB because I'd like to see if we can kind of work work with him out and replace some of the other guys here like uh, older players like Robert Stevenson or Matt Moore but we're gonna have to work to that you got some other guys here like Jose Cisnero uh, that'll probably never move up I, I'm not gonna try to invest too much into that Jose Cajeda now he has moved like all the way down to single A which is really sad uh, but I think that has a lot to do uh, with just just a lack of development and we'll see what happens maybe he moves up but I I'm gonna really try to think about how I'd like to move some of these players around got some other cats right here like Adam Cor uh, Kolarek and again older Adam Simber older um, I'd like to see Ben Joyce move up the reason why I like him is that this guy's got a freaking arm uh, throws really fast, but it's going to take some time for him to, to for him to develop. I thought he did okay with the time that he was up in the majors. The only issue is that uh, he got hurt and had to have surgery. So I actually went to go look up his brother because I was watching a YouTube video and, and, and it said that his brother was drafted by the Angels, but I guess uh, never put a uniform on um, and some personal things happening. So I was actually going to be pumped to see see if I can create a story of the Joyce brothers moving up together up uh, into the majors. Sam Bachman, I'm going to pay attention to this guy, but I just, man, I don't know. I really don't know. 
He's 24 years old. I'm wondering if we can move him down to double A, give him a couple more reps down there, um, and kind of see if we can get the, tr the trash pandas going. Uh, Carson Fulmer, again, like an older guy here. Hunter Strickland, older guy. Uh, so it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough on some, some of this stuff. We do have some closers here. Uh, Carlos Estevez, to me, I think he could do some okay things with the remainder of the time that we have. He's asking six, he's 6 .8 million. We're probably going to let him go after this year. And maybe we'll see some stuff here, right? You got Kelvin Ciceras, who he throws some decent heat. 92 miles an hour, circle change, so his break might be okay. He's got 86 break. This might be a guy we can mess with right here. His potential's a D, but it, and it is what it is there, but we might be able to work with something like that. Catchers, what I recognized here is that there is a lot of catchers on this team, and they are not that good. Um, Gustavo Comparo, Zach Humphreys, I don't know how these, or Juan Flores, I don't know how they're going to grow, but I got to pay attention to that. Anthony Mulroy, I remember last MLB uh, last series, like I thought about trading him to see if we can get some other prospects. Chad Wallach, I think he's here because his contract, like he's down to his last year of his contract. So I'm hoping what we could do in that scenario is maybe, again, that could be a potential trade. Caleb Helton, uh, Hamilton, excuse me, he's 29 years old. Again, man, this is kind of rough. Some of these guys are just a little older, dude. I, it's, it's wild with how bad this farm system is. Now I've been watching a little bit of the of the, pre, of the spring training, and I saw Nolan Chenwell, who was drafted, and this guy's pretty solid uh, already. And and my hope is that you know we got a legitimate first baseman. That was something in the last series where we were trying to find a true first baseman, and maybe Nolan is the guy. Uh, you got Evan White here, decent. Yeah, so it's a younger crew here at first base. Second base, Brandon Drury. I'm a fan of him. Uh, Ringifo, this guy can also play uh, all over the field, so I'd like to see how we can kind of keep him around and hopefully um, just have this guy rock out for us and succeed. Brandon Jury, he could play all around as well, and the way I look at it is that there's a chance, and we'll talk through that as we get to third base, where we might be able to move Brandon Jury around. Caleb Ketchup here, 22 years old. Again, this is a player, when I see the age and stuff, I'm like, okay, what if we moved him down to uh, trip, uh, double A and move Sepulveda up to single uh, to triple A and then kind of see how that would work out there. Third base, this is what I was talking about already. Anthony Rendon is horrendous. This guy, when you see his interviews, man, it just looks like he doesn't care about freaking baseball anymore. The guy got paid and he got paid an exorbitant amount of money. When you look at his awards, they are five years old. He was a silver slugger in 2014 as well as 2019. So it's like his best times are behind him and the guy just looks like he's here to collect the cash, right? 30 million this year, 35 next year and 40 year, uh, the following year. The issue with this is like, he's got a no trade clause. So as much as I'd like to trade him here, I'm like, you know what, for realism, let's see if we can work through this guy. Uh, and like I said, there's a chance more than likely we'll probably leverage Drury to kind of take over for Rendon if we just can't get the right out of him. But we're not going to cut him. We're going to try to see how we can make it all work. Now, the rest of the third base depth here isn't so strong. So that's another thing we have to think about is the fielding. Uh, first, ba first base is fine. Second base is okay if I can keep bringing Gifo and maybe, you know, hold a year with Drury. Third base is horrendous. Stefanik's okay, but he doesn't do much. He's a great fielder, but he's not a great hitter. Um, shortstop, I think we got a good thing here. Uh, Zach Nito, to me, could be a really big star in um, Los Angeles. Uh, we just need to give him a little more time. He's only 23 years old, so he's not even near his prime. Kyron Paris, I really like. I think he could do something pretty decent, consistent on the mount, uh, uh, at bat, and he's got a good, uh, decent arm. Uh, Adrian Placencia, young again, like this is another guy I'd like to just kind of grow. Keep him in double A for maybe two more years, move him up to triple A and uh, for two more years and then have him play in the majors at at, um, at 25. Levon Soto, 
I, I, I'm hoping he can kind of work out. Again, this is another decent fielder, um, but we'll see. And, you know, you got another guy who's freaking old as hell. Uh, Andy Blake, I don't know much about him, but, you know, maybe we'll put him up in double A uh, sooner just to see what we got. Left field, Taylor Ward, I'm a big fan of. This guy was consistent with me in the last series, and I'm hoping he can do work in left field. He could play all over the place, too. So, again, this is the kind of stuff where I'm like, okay, I can move Taylor Ward down to third base. Drury is at uh, second base. Rangifo can run um, shortstop or keep Rangifo at second. You move uh, uh, Rangifo to shortstop if needed for needed. Like, there's things we can do. So, I like the fact that we got some versatility there. Aaron Hicks, uh, I, this guy's old, man. But he looks like he's a decent hitter, so we'll kind of play off that. Joe Adele, I hope he figures this out, man. The dude's ridiculous on base. Um, B potential as well, so I'm like, okay, maybe we can figure this out. He's got center field and right field potential, so we can move Joe Adele to center when Trout needs to rest. Willie Calhoun, don't know much about him, but he's a little older. Joe Stewart, uh, 25. Tucker Flint, um, 23. And Jadiel uh, uh, Sanchez, these are guys here that I might kind of pay attention to as far as stats um, to maybe move up. Center field's up, and you got Trout, which I'm really excited. You know, this guy was killing it. Uh, it was so fun to hit with him, and I just hope that we just keep him healthy. Uh, Jake uh, Marisnik, again, older guy. I don't know if we have, we might move him up if we get injuries. I really would like to see Jordan Adams and Bryce Teodosio really develop. And tri AAA, I'm willing to keep him there for a couple years, maybe this year and next year, before moving him up to see what they got. But I really want to see how they can work out. Uh, Deshaun Knowles is another guy I, I could see moving and, and progressing. But we'll probably keep him behind these guys. Um, and if needed, maybe move up down the road. But this is like a more of like a three-year time frame here and a vision for the center field. Right field, Mickey Moniak. He's right around the age where he could be at his prime. And I'm hoping he can pop off, man. Probably about two more years before he hits his prime. So as long as he can develop and do, and, and do a ton, man, it, it's going to be nice to see a guy like that. I just need consistency from Mickey. Hunter Josier, super old. Maybe we move him down when it's time to move and, and move some other guys up. I'm always trying to pay attention to the contracts because that determines what are we going to do. Albert Rios, uh, this is a guy that, you know, maybe he can move up into double A along with Nelson Rada. Nelson Rada, I'm willing to chill in uh, single A for probably another two years before we move him up to double A. And then again, it just takes time. Calabrese. Uh, this is another guy where I'm not sure how he works out, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but that's pretty much what we have with our roster, man. I'm kind of pumped about this game. I'm excited to see how we're going to be able to develop and, and push this stuff forward. But we're going to take some time in that. When you look at the pitching rotation right now, we got Sandoval at the opener, Reed Detmers, Silseth, Griffin Canning, and Zach Plesek. There's going to be a chance where I may move Tyler into uh the lineup jose suarez maybe because he's got decent stamina i could probably move him in chase silseth i think we're gonna it's gonna be like a a true platoon when he pitches because of his endurance issues he's got decent abilities but then i feel like i'm gonna have to probably lean on like a long reliever like jose suarez or anderson to take some of that helm and then we kind of play it uh by ear but i i think that kind of game right there is probably going to require us to leverage three uh, pitchers at least. Griffin Canning, I don't know, man. That guy really is <laughs> that great in my mind. Um, I, I watched it and I'm like, man, why is this guy still out there? Uh, but it could be just the last year of his contract. So he's not bad. It's just, I don't know. I just don't, I don't know. I didn't like how he pitched last year. Now, this guy right here is Zach Plesak. Um, you know, we'll kind of pay attention to that. Not a bad player, but he's not really great at anything. Um, so, he's just like, okay. So, I, I know we're going to have to figure that that part out there. 
I was trying to figure out where the heck did Blake Snell go, and I was really late on the news because I've been watching a lot of football stuff. I had no idea this SOB went to the freaking Giants, and he got a bag. So, sucks, man. Uh, that was a guy I was like, dude, it'd be fun to really have him here, and uh, we just lost that on chance, and that's a typical Angels thing. We lose opportunities with that stuff, so we'll see what we can do. Now... There are some free agents out there and um you know i think people will try to do it in a couple different ways in my opinion like i am down to snag up guys that i think could really be good um and my hope is that we could take an opportunity to see what they do see the stories behind them right and i don't know how all this stuff will work out but I, I do know that I want to create a good farm uh, system. Um, I know what the guys that we have in there, it's not necessarily the greatest thing. So that's why I am considering like, okay, what if I just grab some of these guys? What if I grabbed a player here just to see what happened? You know, you got like Benny Oka here. Dude's got some pretty good stats at 26 years old. What if we had him down in the AAA and AA for a little bit and just see what happened? Because there's some older guys on this team that I'm like, I'll eat a little cash. I'll eat a little cash for now to develop some parts of the farm system and see how it goes. So we'll probably talk about that in a sec in a little bit. But that's that's how I, I want to do it. I, I'm not I'm not the greatest when it comes to to MLB whatsoever. Um, but I do want to have my twist to it. And I'd like to bring in a couple different prospects just to see what happens and see if we can do something with it. I'm not gonna be grabbing 15 guys, but I will grab a couple because one, I feel like our pitching system is crap. I think we traded a lot of guys last year to go for a run only for to crap out and trade them all again. Um, and we're, now we're down those players and we're down prospects. So um, you know, I wanna, I, I wanna do what I would do if I was an owner and I think there are some parts of this game uh, of this uh, of this team that just need a retooling. I can't clean it all up in one fell swoop, but there are players that I'd be down to check out and just go, dude, what if we had them? Um, now, the one thing I wished, right, that I could see here is I wish I could see their dev trade um, here. It would have been dope because I see like the contact stuff. That's kind of neat to see all their stats here, but I wish I could see their dev trade. Because that would tell me, like, I'd be willing to take a chance on, like, let's say, Araldo Castilla if he was, um, like, a 62. Because with the C development, I'm like, oh, it's possible. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and I'll let you know how we're going to mess with that. But that'll be how we'll kind of look at this. When it comes to the uh, overall uh, development of this, or, or of, this, of this series here, we're going to play some games. You know, I definitely want to just kind of see some of the pitching uh, uh so we'll probably do some of the storylines are like hey we're just gonna pitch on some of these games just to see what it looks like we're gonna try a couple players out and then go from there then we'll probably look at uh some of the hitters uh some of the some of the players just to see their batting ability uh, see how that goes and then maybe we play a full game maybe i've even watched some just some sim simulation of the series just to just to see how my team does without me controlling it whatsoever and just doing the commentating like i do on one of my other madden series um but there will there will definitely be a part where i could see myself leveraging june to leveraging june um wait what's going on here yeah where i would leverage june to probably focus on uh my prospects so you'll probably see some episodes where it's just heavy prospects like we're gonna watch we're gonna play a couple games of one of the pitchers and some of the some of the uh, position players to see if they actually are worth uh, my time and worth not investing the draft in so you'll see that mix but uh you know it'll be fun and we'll try that out in a couple season i don't know a season or so see what it feels like see how it looks and then if it's good it's good but uh if it's not we'll change it up 
The hope is for us to play baseball in October. I do not want to not play baseball in October. So, you know, it's going to take a little bit. But as you can see here, man, this team is trash. Um, when you look at the standings uh, of this team here, Angels are 21st ranked in uh, the MLB, 17th in contact, 13th in power, 24th in pitching, 28th in defense, and 6th in speed. When you look at our double A team, we're seventh in contact, ninth in power, twelfth in pitching, twenty fifth in defense, twenty fifth in speed. So the double A, we got to start fine tuning that to ensure that we got guys that are going to move up to help it help increase our overall rankings. Because in the double A, triple A, it is even worse. Twenty ninth in contact, tenth in power. So we got some hitters there. Twenty ninth in pitching. So we don't got that there. Fourth in defense. So we got some defensive players we can move up and some potential speed so when i see something like that i'm like okay uh what we're probably gonna have to do is move some of the guys down from double a uh to help with the power and the contact a little bit but along with the pitching but it's gonna take a lot of work man and i'm, I'm looking forward to that but as you can see man our farm system is trash as far as our top prospects are concerned these are the guys that we got, right? Nolan, who's currently in the majors. Gaden Donna is up there um, in the double A. It looks like MLB uh, arrival is going to be potentially in a couple years. So we'll see how that looks like. You got Barrett Kent, a double A guy that's not projected to be there until 2027. Victor Medeiros, um, Nelson uh, Rada. And as you can see, Kyron Paris is there already. Adrian Placencia. He's projected to actually be up in the majors soon. It's just the shortstop stuff is kind of filled up. So I don't know how much I'd like to move him around. Uh, maybe if some injuries were to come up, maybe we move him up. But I don't see myself moving him up probably for another two more years. I'd keep him down there in double A for one more year. Move him up to triple A. Keep him there for maybe two more years. So he'll probably be projected to be out there in 2027. Chase Cheney. Another guy here, I'm like, mm, not quite sure, um, you know, but we'll, we'll see how we can do there. Uh, Deshaun Knowles, another guy. So as you can see, we got some guys that are projected to be okay, but there are some that are well past their projection, and, and that is what it is. But we, we got to figure out how to get the youth in here, man. Um, so when I look at some of these guys here, I'm thinking about a 40-man roster, right? What works, what doesn't work. Who would I like to be a part of the 40? Who would I not be? Hunter Strickland is a guy that I can see myself probably moving on from, from the 40. Uh, you got some other guys here. I'm like, what are we doing? The issue is, is once you take them off the 40, there's a chance they won't make it. But man, I don't know. Adam Simber? What? What? 1.6 million. So this guy got moved all the way down. They don't like him. Oh my gosh, so he just crapped the bed, man. We're paying him $1.6 million to play double-A ball. Kenny Rosenberg, I'd be pretty pumped to see how we can move him up. I think he's not a bad player there. But this is going to be rough, man. Uh, I'd like to see if there's any other guys here that I can potentially move on from already. Um... But, you know, we'll play it out. There's some free like I said, there's some free agents out there that look okay. I'd like to see if I can bring them on, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. But, you know, I think uh, we're in a good spot right there. One of the things I wanted to show real quick were kind of like the uh, training stuff. So I started moving around some of these guys just to see what I should be messing with overall. And the hope is that we can see uh, some of these guys develop in the right way. Um, but you know when it comes to mlb dude it is a lot um it is a lot to do here i don't even know why we do that like it's freaking old dude it's 34 years old it should be like durability more than anything else but yeah so we'll try to show some of the training kind of get that in a decent spot hopefully we'll see these guys kind of develop into something but now we'll, we'll kind of play around with that along the way. So that'll do it for us today, man. I, I'm really excited to see how this team goes. It's going to take us a while to develop this thing. 
um, but it's going to be fun. The Angels are, are my favorite team in baseball. It was something I followed ever since I was a kid. Uh, Angels, you know, coming over from another country. I, I was born outside the United States, and um, in order for me to make friends, I learned how to play sports. And I've played sports all my life, but the very first sport I ever played was baseball. The very first logo that was on my uniform was the California Angels. Um, so it's a team that I adored uh growing up and uh, I'm, I'm trying to grow to get back to them when they when they had otani it was it was a lot funner i could tell you that being <laughs> being an angels fan but without him i'm like man what could we do just like i'm a giants fan i'm a new york giants fan and uh to see how the new york giants are going to play without saquon barkley anymore it's going to be weird so those are my two favorite players um in current sports was saquon barkley for the giants Shohei otani for the for the angels and now we'll see what happens. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be fun. But I appreciate everyone's time today. If y'all like what you saw, please drop a like, leave a comment, tell me what you think. And most importantly, uh, subscribe to keep up with this series, man. We're going to keep uh, getting these videos out and, and getting these episodes out because this is going to go quick on some of these seasons, knowing how crappy we are. I really want to focus on the structure and the development of this team. Playing is going to be fun because I still want to play a video game, but I really want to see what it would be like to be an owner or GM. How could we really build this team to be a freaking powerhouse? It's going to take, in my opinion, probably, I'd say probably about four seasons uh, of us going through hell. Um, if we can get it, if we can succeed before that, great. But the reason why I say four seasons is because you're talking about changing the staff, uh, making sure that they're actually going to positively impact my team. Then we're talking about changing the uh, players, getting them developed and in the right spot and seeing who are the key players who are not. And then seeing what we do with some of these other stars, right? Like the guy that comes to mind that we might have to give a chance for him to succeed somewhere else is, is Mike Trout. He's such a great player and he's projected to be with us for a very long time. Um, but is it fair to Mike Trout? Now he wants to win a World Series with us, but my whole thing is like, is that right for him? By the time he, you know, he's 32 now, by the time he's 35, that's when this team starts feeling it. I don't see myself cutting him uh, anytime soon. But I, I wonder if it would be good to let him go to another team like the Dodgers. Maybe he Matt pairs up again with with Shoei Otani or we send him to the freaking Braves, right? Um, or a team that's up and coming that can that might be able to figure it out because they're a little younger and they need some more veterans. Baltimore Orioles. What if we freaking sent Trout to the Orioles and let him kind of rock out there and kick butt? Um, so... You know, we'll see. I, it is it is something I, I'm thinking about, you know, worst case scenario because Trout deserves to be a champion. I don't know if I can get him there, but I'm sure as hell going to try. Uh, but it's going to be tough. So appreciate everyone today, man. Let's see if we can uh, get it going. Y'all have yourself a good one. Let's go Angels.